on today's episode. Recently I've been flying this ZMR835 again. As you can see then in the video footage, I've had varying degrees of success, especially with taking off and landing. Apart from my poor skills, one of the issues is the landing gear arrangement, which is <laughs> somewhat um, flexible, shall we say, and there's not really much I can do about that. I've 3D printed this brace to go across here, and that helped with some of the flexing of the wheels but um, that is causing me grief in in taxing and and in landing as you can see in this picture i recently 3d printed some landing gear for my cub my thoughts then are to do something similar for this little guy this is a design that i've modified from thingiverse and rather than attaching it directly to the plane my idea is with another 3D printed part to screw those two together such that I can put this on the bottom of the plane, glue that on. This will then be secured with three nylon M3 screws which in the inevitable event of one of my heavy landings should mean that the landing gear will break off and not actually rip the bottom out of the plane. That's the idea then. Let's see how it all goes together. My first job then is to tap the holes in the plate for the M3 screws. I could have 3D printed the thread in there, but I prefer to cut it. The other thing to be aware of, you probably can't see on this view, but I'll quickly take you to the computer. Make sure that you have sufficient perimeters in your slicing software to make sure that when you're tapping a hole, you don't cut into the voids in the plastic, the infill you're cutting into the plastic there. I always like to check my g-code before I commit it to plastic. This is a very handy tool and again I'll leave a link in the description where you can load your g-code file and with a little slider here you can go up through the different layers. You can see the infill there and make sure that things look as they should I was talking about the perimeters around the holes that I'm going to tap and you can see here that the one, two, three perimeters which are set as a parameter in my slicing software. You get all the information about the model, how it's going to print here and you can even drill down into the individual layers. You can see here my first layer height 0.3 per millimeter and it gives you the speeds and a lot of useful information. Let's now get back to tapping the holes. Clearly it's a very soft material so you don't want to over egg it. Make sure that the tap goes right through the piece. There, I can see the material that it's removed there. That looks nice and clean. Now, quickly test with one of our M3 screws. Yep, that all looks to be good. Now I can get on and tap the other two. The next task then will be to glue the threaded plate into place there. Clearly I've removed the original landing gear and taken off the majority of the covering film in that area. That's going to sit on there. When it comes to choice of glue, the usual glue for this type of PLA plastic would be 
superglue, cyanoacrylate, but I think that that might be a little brittle in this case. The next choice then is going to be epoxy, so I'm going to mix up some epoxy and glue that in place there, holding it in place while it dries with those little clamps. One thing that I've done is with some glass paper, just sanded this area to roughen it up to better accept the epoxy and done a similar thing on the plate there. Just before I mix up the epoxy and put that in place, what I'm going to do is to clean both surfaces with some acetone. Uh, the reason to choose acetone for the plywood it's not particularly important what you use just to get the dust off of there. However, the thing is that with PLA plastic, if you wipe it with acetone, it actually becomes a little sticky. It doesn't really dissolve PLA plastic, not in the same way as it does ABS, but I do believe if you 3D print in PLA, perhaps you've got a, a model that's larger than your bed and you make it in different parts and want them want to, to glue them together, if you have a sufficiently tight fit, you can just wipe them with acetone and push them together and they'll kind of fuse themselves. That now then is ready for me to mix up the epoxy and pop that in place. Ready now then for the final assembly. That's been allowed to set up overnight. The wheels themselves, I have changed the smaller ones to these that look more appropriate. Um, they're just attached with M3 bolts. I did manage to find in my box of bits this little knurled nut, which I think was actually off the original 3D printer bed screws, which I replaced. Uh, they're keeping the wheel in place there nicely. I cut the M3 nylon screws to suit, and that's going to sit on there like that. There, I think that looks the business. Hopefully tomorrow it'll be a reasonable flying day and I can take some footage of it in action. One other little modification you can see there is that I've added a tail wheel rather than the skid arrangement. A couple of worthwhile modifications there. I hope that you'll agree. Thanks for watching.